I am Peter Buffett, as a musician and a composer. My father is the famous investor of Warren Buffett. The people saw me as a normal child of a wealthy person, which is often why people are curious about me and the book. My father, who is 92 this year, he's still driven. He goes to the office six days a week. He still lives in the house that I grew up in because my father wasn't pursuing money. He loved what he did every day and it happened to make a lot of money. I'm the youngest of three and my sister Susan is the oldest. And then my brother has been farming most of his adult life uh, and is also a very accomplished photographer. My greatest privilege is growing up in that environment, a safe, loving, nurturing home. Every day of my childhood, at the dinner table, when we could come together, talk about what happened at school. My father was always home at the same time for dinner, always at the dinner table. My dad would tell some funny joke or something. We did not live in some big mansion. I had a, an allowance of maybe a dollar or something. He's all about finances, but maybe my talent was somewhere else. I had gone over to the piano since I was probably four or five years old. Stanford was a great place to learn. I know it is very challenging to some, the idea of, of not finishing college. <laughs> and my parents, they were thrilled that that, that was a choice I made. I, I enjoyed school, um, but there was nothing that drove me like music always had. This is a song I wrote many years ago called Searching for a Place Called Home. grandfather, who passed away when I was very young, had left us a little bit of money. When I was 19, I got $90,000. Most of it was to buy time. I could just keep my life simple to take my time and learn and grow and develop what I was hoping could be a career. We always knew the wealth that my father was creating would not come back to us, that it would go out into the world. And we never felt entitled. That was his success, not ours. Because my mother passed away in 2004, and he decided in 2006 to create these large foundations for myself and my siblings, and also money to the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. From 2006 on, it's been constant learning about how to best way to deploy money and resources into a world with great, great need. We saw where t-shirts were made in Bangladesh. We saw extreme poverty in, in Liberia and other African countries. We went places that opened our eyes to just how complex a problem inequality in this particular time in the world is. How can we be good stewards of this money? We were very lucky to have parents that uh, basically, you know, weren't flashy and showing off. We always knew after dinner that he would go read and he would be on the phone with his partner, Charlie Munger. For me, anyway, just the comfort of knowing he was there, he was happy, things were solid and safe, that's a gift, you know, a lot of families don't have. And fathers, you know, might come home mad at the boss or wishing they didn't have to do something. Never that feeling of negativity. My mother was a huge influence on uh, my life. I would have a lunch break at school and I would walk home and my mother would be there uh, with a person. It was always someone different than we were, whether it was skin color or class or point of view or whatever it might be. And what she showed me is that everyone has something to teach, that if you listen, married very young 
my own children. They're 40s. One of my daughters, she's a full-time mom. And then my other daughter, Nicole, is an artist. any parent can do it is to really examine what the expectations you're putting on your child. I mean, what is it generated by your desires versus what's best for the child? I think that is a key question for any parent. She nice. Look her over once or twice.